Hello everyone, welcome. I am Edward Filyun, I'm the minister of the Center for Spiritual Living where uh, Micah Price was part of our spiritual community. And Micah being kind and polite and inclusive would want me to make you, his family and friends, feel welcome and appreciate you for attending. So I'm going to invite you since we're all here um, just for this moment to, if you feel like it, to turn on your video so we can see each other's faces and say hello to each other just by waving. So turn on your video if you can and um, let's see who is here for a moment.
ah, we're not able to. Well, it's all right. Then we will carry on. I thought it would be nice to see each other's faces. I'll check in the background. So let us begin. Today we are here to look into our hearts to find peace with Micah's passing. A teacher once said that each of us fulfills a specific purpose in life, that we each come to shine a unique light upon the earth, a light that cannot be duplicated or overshadowed by another. That certainly could be said of Micah's light, unique for certain, not easy to duplicate and certainly not possible to overshadow at all. And when it comes time to move on, it sometimes seems as if that light shines no more. And we who are left behind, we miss the human contact that we enjoyed, like when Micah walked among us. That is the nature of physical passing. It can and does leave a void for those of us who are left behind. And that's why we gather like this, at times like this, to affirm that although Micah has gone on, his light shines ever bright in our memories. And even so, our human hearts, how they ache, because Micah is no longer with us. He leaves behind a long, long, long list of people, family, extended family, spiritual family, friends, all who were touched by his light touched by his love, and touched by his light. So to set the tone for our service today, let each one of us, according to our own faith tradition, take a moment of quiet contemplation to reflect upon the memories we have of Micah and how he touched our lives. And in the absence of a particular faith tradition, I invite you to enjoy some moments of quiet remembering of Micah. Thank you for that moment of reflection. And now I introduce to you Heather, who will lead us through our service. Hi, everyone. My name is Heather. I'm a really close friend of Micah's and have been since um, UCSC when we were both banana slugs. I wanna start by saying thank you. Thank you for all showing up and being here today on this Sunday afternoon. Thank you to Reverend Edward and the Centers for Spiritual Living of Santa Rosa for humbly and graciously helping us lead this celebration of life today. Micah and I both had the privilege to know Reverend Edward and go to some really transformational spirit camps together. Micah also participated in the AIDS life cycle with Edward and many others from the center. We feel so blessed for you to hold sacred space for us here today, Edward. And if you would like to donate, please see the chat. I got the honor of spending a lot of recent time adventuring with Micah and having dropped in conversations and exploring meditation and spirituality with this sweet soul. One thing I appreciate about Micah so much is the way he saw and embraced people for the essence of who they really are and pierced through societal judgments. Micah's friendship with me gave me and others in this world so much confidence to be radically and uniquely who they were. Micah, you were and are truly a vivacious, vibrant, full-hearted, present, and kind soul. I will never forget the way you showed up in this world with eagerness to connect, willingness to be vulnerable, and your peaceful, gentle radiance. Your mom, Johnny, was your best friend and mirrors these qualities so beautifully. She will be speaking next. I will be introducing each speaker today that had contacted the family and prepared to speak. If you would like to add any reactions or comments in the chat, please feel free to send your love. 
there or on his Facebook memorial page. There's also been a page created for Micah on the Centers for Spiritual Living website. Here's Johnny. Thank you all for being here today. That, it means a lot to me. Micah was born February 19th, 1988 at 6 a.m. While I was pregnant with Micah, Micah heard my voice a lot because I was student teaching in biology and chemistry. And up until the week or so before he was born, and when the nurse handed to him to me crying and squawking, and I said, hi, Micah. And he just stopped crying and he looked at me right in the eyes. Um, we already knew each other. It was love at first sight and that will last the rest of the days of my life on earth. Micah was my best friend, my cycling and hiking and travel buddy. He was a person I sent my anti-Trump memes and political cartoons to and anything else that would make us laugh. We loved discussing politics and we both shared our love for teaching and he would often call me from around the world to brainstorm teaching ideas or classroom discipline issues and we have and always will have this deep, ever-present bond. Micah has one older brother, Ben. He's 22 months older. And Ben came in this world as our guide and mentor with the label of being severely autistic. Micah and Ben have a very special relationship. And like any other brothers, they teased and tormented each other. When they were little, Ben had issues letting Micah get close to him, but Micah was relentless. He never gave up. And at night he would crawl into bed with Ben just to be close to him, <sighs> to get close to his big brother. Um, the three of us had many adventures the past years hiking and playing at the beach, cooking gluten-free, sugar-free, grain-free meals that Micah insisted upon, and watching the sound of music for about the thousandth time together. Ben taught Micah the beauty of pure, unconditional love and acceptance and compassion and many more of the beautiful, uh, many of your beautiful notes to me over the past week have reflected this trait. In Micah's college essay for the USA system, he spoke of Ben and how he was running around applying for schools, scholarships, and being caught up in the franticness of life. But his big brother, who only had concerns of who he was gonna play with or who was gonna cook for him, without a worry in the world, brought him back to what was truly important. Even though Ben doesn't speak, he was a constant teacher for Micah to teach to the um, be present and live in the moment, a lesson which we all struggle with. It goes without saying that everybody who knew Micah knows his passion for travel. He had taught in four countries and traveled to over 30. He taught in Thailand, China, Switzerland, and became a citizen of the world. He told me his favorite way to travel was with a small backpack and very little money eating with the locals and staying in inexpensive places to try to make his money stretch. His favorite country was Cambodia. He fell in love with the children there and he'd returned many, many times. Micah packed a lifetime of accomplishments in his abbreviated time here. His biggest being, his very biggest being the global community of close friendships he made. His friends and family were more important to him than any other single thing. He had a gentle way with people and he was a great listener and he fiercely protected his friends. For the many of you that he loved, I will forever be grateful. Carl, his husband, Jade, Aaron, Heather, and Anna, thank you for always being there for him through the good times and hard times. I can say without a doubt that he loved you with all of his heart. We will continue to be a family and we're gonna to stick together. Micah was gentle and he was sensitive and he was a thoughtful person. 
He felt things very deeply, and this was both beautiful, but also part of his personality that he struggled constantly with. He loved so deeply, but also hurt so deeply, and was tormented by these battles in his own mind. This, however, was only one small aspect of who Micah was. He had a tremendous impact on this world, and the imprint he has left on so many will never be forgotten. I know for sure that Micah would want each and every one of you to live your life with love and compassion and appreciation for each other's differences, and that he would want you to put aside material things and to travel. Because travel, when you travel, you learn. You learn to love each other. And Micah is at peace and on one of the most spectacular adventures of all. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Next up, we have Carl who is Micah's beloved husband and partner and best friend. Thank you, you all for who show up here. This is from my car meeting. I wanted to thank you, my husband, Micah, for his selfless love. He always treat me patiently. When I first arrived in America, I could hardly speak any English. Instead of giving up on me, he gave me everything he could to help me. I feel like I am a child again. Growing up here and being loved by him. Micah is always very kind to me. He's taking care of what I need and even more than what I expect. I am a very shy person, but he always gives me courage and motivation. I have grown a lot in past three years with his help. I recovered the meaning of life. I become much happier than before. I will always thank him for the, his dedication to me. I hope I can be a better person and make him proud. He loves taking me to travel and he always planning everything in elevation and the other best. So I have never need to worry about it. He showed me the differences in many countries and teach me how to respect other different national culture. He once showed me a map, which was full of push, push things. He told me that those were all countries he had visited. And then he said, he will take me to go all of them. He wanted to show me where he went, what he saw, and what he learned. What makes him a better person, and he wants me to experience that the same. In the past three years, I have traveled to many places together with him. Every time when I travel with him, I can always learn a lot from him. He can always handle all crises. I can even describe how incredible he is. He is just amazing. Michael loves teaching. He always tells me how important his job is. I know he is an excellent teacher and he loves all his students. At work, he can always bring his 
analogies to his students. The diversity, the diversity of his courses allow students to have new experience with every day, every day. He is always full of creativity. Micah has a grandmother. He told me many times how important his mother is. She is not only just his mother, also is his best friend. They are always open to tell each other with every, every they think and help each other to grow and learn. My God's mother is always very kind to me. I can see that have, I can see that have very close relationship. And I know Micah loves his mom more than anything else. Their love for each other will last forever. I am honored to be Micah's husband. I love him very deeply. I love him since first time we met and I will always love him. I know my life when it keeps going on, but what I feel for him never changed. Even with the time, I will always remember him, his kindness to me. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. And Carl was with um, Micah's mom and mom's boyfriend, who will play us a song later. Next up is speaking is Jade. Jade and I met through Micah this summer and have become really, really close friends since and have been on many adventures in the short time that her and I have known each other. Take it away, Jade. Hi, thank you, Heather. That was a beautiful, beautiful introduction. Um, and uh, Johnny, thank you very much. That was a very, very beautiful um, speech that you gave. It really was beautiful. And Carl, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I feel very nervous like you probably did in this moment. So thanks for being brave um, and going before me. And I love you guys very much. Um, I just wrote Micah a letter. Uh, I have also been um, really lucky, like Heather, to have spent a lot of time with him recently. And he's been here um, in our home a lot over the summer and since COVID started. Um, Dear Micah, it's been a week and I cannot believe you are gone. This feels so completely unreal. How will I get through this when you are the person who I would call and ask for guidance and support right about now? You were my best friend and such a seriously high quality person. We were supposed to have so many more adventures together. You gave me so much unconditional love and always lifted me up so high. You taught me to love myself more and how to really adventure and explore. I thought we would be doing that until we were old and gray, chuckling about the good old times. I am so grateful to have known you and felt your deep love and bright light. There is no one I have ever met quite like you. You were always down, always saying yes, game for anything and ready to live life. You really did live, Micah. And you taught the people around you to seize the moment and the day. I'm gonna miss you so much, my dear friend. I will miss our vulnerability and telling you literally everything. I'll miss sharing stories, journeys, and even bickering with you about silly things like we're brother and sister <laughs> and annoying Heather <laughs> while doing that. I will cherish and keep dear to my heart all the memories and life lessons you have shared and taught me when I feel down about myself or I'm going through a hard time, I will remember how you always lifted me up and made me reframe my story and change the way I was talking to myself. I'll try to use the skills you taught me without you here. I will try to think, what would Micah tell me in this moment? I'm gonna get the feel it out tattoo. We were gonna get together. You see, after the summer of feeling it out, trying to have as many small adventures while being safe and navigating COVID, this was our summer motto. I'm sure I'll have to say more to you after this letter and after this day, so please listen for me. I can't wait. 
until we can have another adventure together on the other side. And I will think of you often until then. I love you so much, Micah, and my life will not be the same without you. Thanks. Thank you, Jane. As many of you know, Micah taught around the world. Um, he got his teaching credential in Santa Cruz like I did. And he decided to adventure abroad to Thailand and China and, and Switzerland. And he made so many close friends wherever he went. Um, so this is a post, a video from his dear friend, Sebastian, who was a colleague with him in Switzerland. Hi, my name is Sebastian and I'm sending this message from Berlin, Germany. I thought we'd be on the move outdoors with a bit of nature behind me, just like Micah would have liked and also just like Micah did most of his life. I worked with Micah in Switzerland for two years where I got to know him as a passionate and natural teacher. He was loved by all of his students. They were infected by Micah's curiosity. They were impressed by his deep-rooted sense of what education is about. Opening minds and making this world a better place. As a friend, Micah was caring, attentive and fun-loving. He cared for people and although I have never been to his native part of California, I felt I knew his mum, Joni, and his brother very well. He often talked about them in loving terms. The love for them was obvious, but this is what influenced him to go back home almost six years ago now. I'm recording these words from my local area in Berlin, a city which was once divided, which is fitting given Micah's life spent trying to make sense of this fragmented world, reaching out to different cultures. Micah loved Asia and he will be very much on my mind when I eventually make my first trip there. Micah has left us far too young, far too soon. He has touched so many lives, his family, colleagues, students and friends. He had so much more to offer. We are now united around the world, from Asia to Europe to North America, celebrating Micah's life in person, in California, or virtually. Micah would have loved this. To sum up, I was looking for a quote which would describe Micah, and I found one by the French writer Jules Verne, and from his book Journey to the Centre of the World. I'll say it in French first. Je rêve avec les yeux ouverts. I dream with my eyes open. Bon voyage, Micah. Another colleague that Michael was really close to us was named Cheryl. So Cheryl will be speaking next. Dearest Micah, you are a wonder, a most compassionate, kind, caring, and loving person. Your beautiful smile brightens the day like a rainbow, and your golden heart shines through every cloud. When Mike and I first met in Switzerland, we were the two English teachers at the new school, working together from the beginning. We immediately pledged our help to one another, I with my unit planners, and Micah with his tech savvy. Circumstances made for us living in the same town and even sharing an apartment for a couple months. Despite our generational differences, we bonded over shared perspectives in education, politics, entertainment, and food. We even had weekly steak nights. I cooked the fillets and Micah made amazing salads. One time we took a weekend trip centered around fabulous food. 
Any thought of Micah brings sweet memories and deep smiles. Micah's energy and enthusiasm encouraged me both professionally and personally. And for that, I am grateful indeed. To end, I'm going to repeat some words I said about Micah when he left Switzerland. They're words of Maya Angelou. I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Micah, you made me feel important. Thank you so much, Cheryl. I would like to introduce one of Micah's close friends growing up, Daniel. Micah knew Daniel since he was in kindergarten. Hi, my name is Daniel Morales. Um, I was one of Micah's oldest friends. Uh, we go back since fourth grade. Um, Growing up with Micah, I suspect, was, you know, in a lot of ways, the same as growing up with, uh, you know, most kids our age. Try to get away with doing silly things and, um, you know, watching movies you're not supposed to, play games you're not supposed to. But as I look back now, I think, you know, more than anything else, Micah always brought a uh, sense of, you know, adventure and um i got to see him you know i mean we went on adventures and explored the neighborhood but you know he cranked it up to 11. boy scouts cup uh eagle scouts hiking trips capstone project i mean he eventually got his you know, master's degree in teaching credential and went to teach around the world um he was i think a true explorer at heart but I think as part of that too, he also grew into this, you know, I, I, I kind of like a guide almost, um, you know, you could be around Micah and he was just unabashedly himself and you couldn't help but be the same. Um, and, you know, he was such a compassionate person anytime Anytime he came back to visit his family, he'd also make time for us as well. And I was so grateful that I was able to experience that. I think it's rare that somebody like Micah comes into your life. And I think that we're all better for knowing him and knowing how that, how to just be so open so that, you know, anybody else around you can if they can also be that open. I know, I know we'll all miss him, but I know that he's left his mark on this world. And I know that I'm going to do everything I can to try to channel a little bit of that. And I hope everybody else can too. Mm. Thank you, Daniel. Next, we have Micah's dad, Scott. I met Scott in San Francisco when Micah and I lived there when we were 19 together. And I'll never forget the look on Scott's face when we all went to Cafe Gratitude and he ordered a pizza and was very surprised to see what he got, a, a vegan restaurant. <laughs> Here's Scott. Hello, uh, my name is Scott Price. Uh, Micah Price is my son. Um, and I'm here to say a few words um, about his passing and about his life. I uh, just was very fortunate to be Micah's father. He was, as you know, an amazing person. He uh, loved so many people and so many people loved him. Um, and he accomplished many things and he was able to travel to, I don't know, 35 countries. I think he went to, um, and, um, 
Anyway, I'm going to uh, just share three photos with you uh, regarding Micah. Um, and I think they're, they're, they're very important. So uh, one of the things that um, uh, his mother and I and Micah did together was when he was a high school student, we encouraged him uh, to participate in the uh, local Boy Scout troop. And he did so um, for three or four years and um, was very successful. And um, one of the things that he has said that he was most proud of was obtaining his Eagle Scout rank. Um, uh, it's, it's very rare. I was a scout, but I was not an Eagle Scout. And um, it took a lot of work and a lot of uh, perseverance and uh, his mother helped him a lot with his merit badges. And I was fortunate enough to be an assistant scoutmaster in his troop and uh, accompanied him on many of our adventures. So um, anyway, I think this was a key thing in showing him that he can accomplish something very difficult. And um, um, I think it helped propel him into uh, his future successes. Ten years ago, we were uh, fortunate enough to um, travel to Thailand to visit with Micah and um, where he was doing his first year as a teacher. And uh, that was quite an interesting uh, assignment that he had. But um, we, anyway, we saw him at the end of his school year in the summer and um, uh, saw some of Thailand and then also went on to Laos where we took this amazing trip down the Mekong River. And um, the first part of the trip was a bike ride, and then, this, uh, and then we went caving. And then after that, uh, we came out and we were about to go on a kayak trip up the river, and it started to rain. And um, so Micah's mom had a hat, but Micah and I did not have one, and uh, so I looked around and I was able to find these wonderful rice farmers and they sold us their hats for um, under $4 total. But here is the photo that we took with them. And um, you can see that. So the guy next to me, I bought that big wild hat from him. And then Micah bought the other more traditional farmer's hat from the lady on the end. And uh, so that was a very good memory of our trip. Um, anyway, this backdrop is a, um, uh, I don't know, blanket, or I don't know what it is exactly, but it, uh, it Micah bought it for me um, on his tr uh, trip to India. All right. So finally, I um, have a photo that um, I happened to take when Micah was two or three, so that was 30 years ago. Um, and f for whatever reason, Micah had um, was underneath uh, the sprinklers, and I don't know if he was standing there and the sprinkler came on or if he walked under the water, but as he walked under the water, uh, he got really cold and he just stood there crying, not moving out of the water, um, but just standing there crying. And we had to grab him and pull him out of there. But to me, this, when I thought of Mike and when I thought what he's been going through the last few months, I thought of this picture. And it just seems to um, capture, you know, the dilemma he was under and the inability to work through it. And, you know, maybe he was just that way. Maybe at two years old, he wasn't able to get himself out of the cold water and he, I don't know.
It's one of those photos, you know. Mike, I miss you. I'm so grateful that uh, we had a wonderful uh, summer together and you stayed here with me for a week and we became much closer. And then uh, uh, you and Ben came to visit for Christmas and we went on a wonderful bike ride where you uh, were at the head of the tandem bicycle and Ben was behind you pedaling. And um, he seemed to be so happy to be with you and I was happy to be with both of you. And I'm grateful that um, we were at a really good space at this time. God bless you. God be with you. Thank you so much for what you gave us in your life. I love you. Take care. As many of you know, Michael was an educator that cared deeply about his students, really stood for social justice and most recently, he worked in a really unique school in Healdsburg above Santa Rosa, where he got to take students to DC and bring teaching to life. Next up are two sisters, Hudson and Katie, that got the pleasure of having Micah as their teacher. Thank you for letting me speak here today. My name is Hudson Meyer and I'm in eighth grade at the Healdsburg School. Mr. Bryce was my social studies teacher for three years, starting in sixth grade. During two of those years, he was also my advisor. When I think of the name Micah Price, I think of a happy and kind person. His classes were always really creative and he worked hard to instill a secure love of learning in his students. For example, he organized many simulations where we played different roles and or characters from the past in order to experience what life was like for people in different points of time during history. So when parents of potential students got tours of our school, instead of walking into a classroom where kids were sitting there, reciting lines from a textbook, they walked into a classroom where a couple kids were putting on a mini play about the medieval times where they were like adorned in paper in, in paper armor while throwing crumpled up pieces of paper and wielding paper sh shields. Other than simulations, Mr. Price also had his focus on current events and how issues occurring in other places affected us. He talked about what it was like to face prejudice and homophobia as an openly gay man, which made us all realize how important it is for the new generation to take charge of today's world, to create a more open and colorful society for people in the future to look back on. His teaching made us more aware and bolder than we had ever been before. Even though I didn't know Mr. Price outside of school, I think many people here can attest to the fact that he was a total child at heart. For example, in seventh grade, we have a tether ball in the quad. We had, I don't know what happened to that thing now, a tether ball in the quad by our science classroom. People would get in trouble for playing with it during passing periods because it would make them late to class. So you can imagine the stress when Mr. Price just kind of popped out of nowhere and I was playing the other ball with another student. Yeah, there were about uh, 30 seconds left in the passing period. So this wasn't like, this wasn't going well, guys. He made eye contact with us. And we stared back and we were like scared to blink. But he just broke into a smile and said, hey, you guys playing tether ball? As we made it into the science room, I looked behind me just in time to see Mr. Price run back to the tether ball and start playing with it by himself, laughing. That moment has always stuck with me. The student that I had been playing tetherball with just smiled and murmured, child at heart. That isn't enough of an example for you. What about the fact that he and I would compare our Aquaphor chapsticks and convince other people to buy them too? 
At least until he informed me that he had converted to Bert's bees, because he was fancy like that. All of these memories of him just make the idea of his passing so unreal. He will forever be missed by his students, staff members, friends, and family. Not only because he was a, we, he was a teacher we knew, but because he taught us how to find passion and happiness in an ordinary day. There's still so many questions circulating through my mind, along with the tired phrase, if this hadn't happened, if this hadn't happened. But when I feel at my worst, I think about the double rainbow seen the day after we got the news. I think that it was a sign of him telling us that he's okay. If anything, this sugar ice stood for kindness and support. So in order to both honor him and cope with this loss, we have to be there to pick each other up. Not to forget our sadness, but to hold each other's hands when or if we need to cry. To Mr. Price's family, especially his brother and mother Joni, I know how hard this must be. But please know that he was an amazing person and there's no doubt that you influenced him in a really positive way. I'll leave you all with this anonymous quote. Here it is. Quote, whenever grief tries to steal the beauty of your memories, just remember, love never dies, end quote. Thank you. Hi, my name is Katie Meyer. I'm the sister of Hudson Meyer, a THS alumni, and most importantly, I was a former student of Mr. Price's. Recently, I've been reflecting on the time I've spent with him and I've realized something. The little things about a person are often what hold the biggest influence in our lives. And oftentimes, we don't even realize how much these little things stay with us, even years later, until they're not a constant for us anymore. For the last few years, every time I came to school to pick up Hudson, Mr. Price would always make an effort to say hi to me and ask me how school was and say that he missed me. Even if I hadn't been a student for many years, I used to see him over Zoom when Hudson was in class and it became a bit of a joke between them about how I was always running back and forth to get food and get out of the view of the camera so the class and the teachers wouldn't see my morning face and crazy hair. The last time I talked to him was during one of those morning Zooms and he was as kind as he had ever been even though it was just virtual. He was still the same guy, same teacher, even years later and I loved hearing him teach the class. It always reminded me of my years with him. I remember how Mr. Price would always encourage us to learn about our world and current events because he wanted us to know that understanding everything we could would teach us how to navigate the world better. And Mr. Price knew how to navigate the world. I think fondly back to the times when he would go on class trips to us and how adventurous he was. It was like he couldn't get enough of the world around him and he always wanted to travel and explore and see new things and experience everything he could. He would show us pictures from these trips and tell us stories about monkeys and camels and getting lost and then finding your way back to the hotel you were staying in. I remember how he always wore his THS hoodie and khakis and how he'd always play classical music for us during tests and any other music we wanted during work time. Or how he'd let us wear headphones while we worked because he knew a lot of us focused better with music. When my class wanted to do a protest after our country was rocked with school shootings, he mysteriously ran out of things for us to do in class the day the protest was scheduled and opted to let us have free time, which a lot of us used to make signs and add finishing touches to our plans. Mysteriously enough, some markers also ended up appearing on his desk, and that certainly helped in the sign making process. Mr. Price traveled the long journey to DC with us, hiked trails in Yosemite with us, traveled to other countries far, far away with students for events, and took every opportunity to explore the world firsthand with us. One time, a couple classmates and I ended up signing up for World Scholars Cup, which is a huge academic competition that Mr. Price encouraged us to look into and implement it into the THS community. You would think that for a middle schooler, having to spend extra time after school learning more, debating more, and studying more would be boring, but Mr. Price always made it fun. He was always there to encourage us, to keep calm us, to keep us calm at competitions too. I remember how we would all go out to dinners and we'd go into grocery stores after and run around with $10 trying to find snacks to buy. And then how the next morning, our teacher's team would come downstairs from our hotel rooms, blurry eyed and nervous and talk out the jitters with him over a cup of hotel coffee. 
I would say the best part, though, was the award ceremonies. When we would all sit together, middle school hearts beating, stomach stirring with excitement, trying to see if we would be up there on the stage with medals around our necks. Typically, we did really well because Mr. Price was an amazing teacher. And I remember how nobody cheered for us as loud as he did. And this ceremony went on for a long time. And every single time we would come back to our seats, he would smile at us and congratulate us. I think that's what I remember the most and what I always will, his support. Mr. Price taught because he genuinely wanted to see us grow and experience everything we could. He wanted us to know just how limitless our worlds could be. And I think he succeeded in a lot of ways. He was selfless, he was kind, he was smart, adventurous, thoughtful, talented, and above all else, he was beloved by everyone and he's missed by everyone today. I hope that even now he continues to explore and see just how limitless his world is. And I hope that we all continue to remember the little things. Thank you. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Katie. And thank you so much, Hudson. It's so nice to hear students of his share. So we thought about what to do for music for this, and it ties in so perfectly that, you know, rainbows have really been appearing everywhere. Um, the girls that just spoke aren't the only ones that have been seeing rainbows. I've been seeing so many rainbows. Micah's mom's been seeing so many rainbows, Jade, maybe many of you too. Um, so today, Johnny's, Micah's mom's beloved partner, Kurt, is going to play a song for us, Somewhere Under the Rainbow. And then after that, my housemate, Anna Mason, and my boyfriend, Jared Wheelock, are going to play a Sarah McLaughlin song and we're going to show a really beautiful slideshow with a bunch of pictures of Micah. And again, thank you so much for being here. Reverend Edward is going to close us out at the very end after the slideshow and the music with a closing prayer. And just thank you, thank you, thank you for all your love and all your support. Welcome friends, ancient teachings from the indigenous peoples the world over taught that the rainbow represented a bridge or path for special messengers between the Holy Spirit and the mortals. A bridge only for the very good and virtuous, the rainbow bridge. Micah's grandmother was a nurse, his mother and father like himself, were teachers doing work of service for others, not for themselves, true rainbow warriors. Micah came from great genes, not in a physical sense, but one out of actual importance. Genes from the heart, genes from the soul, genes from the community, genes for the greater good of us all. The noblest of stock, I would submit. And we know without a doubt that Micah ascended this righteous path and is shining as many colors of lights, guiding our way, this messenger, forever a teacher, forever the good son, forever a brother, always.
dreamed of, dreams really do come true. Ooh, ooh, someday I wish upon a star, wake up where the clouds are far behind. Far behind me, with trouble melts like lemon drops. High above the chimney drops, that's where. Wow, wow, wow. Ooh, 
like to close our time together with a reading from the American writer Henry Van Dyke. I'm standing upon the seashore and a ship at my side spreads her white sails to the morning breeze and starts for the blue ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength. I stand and watch her until at length she hangs like a speck of white cloud just where the sea and sky come to mingle with each other. Then someone at my side says, there she is gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight, that is all. She is just as large and massed and hull as she was when she left my side. 
and she is just as able to bear her load of living freight to her destined port. Her diminished size is in me, not in her. And just at that moment when someone at my side says, there she is gone, there are other eyes watching her coming and other voices ready to take up the glad shout. Here she comes. Let us take a moment to silently call to mind the largeness of Micah, the memory we have of Micah as we knew him in our personal experience. And it is with this remembering that we commit him to the next phase of his journey, even as we hold his memory with us always. Clearly from today, Micah existed among us as a person of, of great value and charm and love and influence and so much more. If there remains anything unsaid or unforgiven or unasked, take this moment now to silently say it in your own mind, to release Micah in your thoughts. From the one source we have all come into that one source we must all return. And Micah has gone before us to that source. So we tenderly release him into the loving arms of the next phase of his beautiful being. This concludes our service and time together. I thank you for being here. We will leave the Zoom room open for several minutes. And I love and bless Micah's memory. Goodbye, everyone.